have one more question before we get into game time. See, I'm the real. You know, player. I love playing games. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love game time. But Evan Fournier. So I saw this stat according to Elias Sports Bureau. He is the fourth player in shot clock era to go 0 for 10 or worse in his debut for a new team. I think people are overreacting because I think, you know, you're going to have nerves. It's, it's hard to adjust to a new team, a new system. But from your perspective, what do you think he does need to do to adapt to this Celtics system from your experience? I think he just needs to be himself because that that performance, that over 10 performance kind of just told me he was pressing a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, try, because of, of all the things who he is, he's a competitor first. Right. He's a much more competitive person than, than we take him for just by watching him play because he's not uh, overly emotional uh, or combative. Uh, and that works to his favor a lot of the times, but it also gets him into trouble sometimes when he's, for example, trying to drive into traffic and shoot in traffic uh, mm -hmm. among a, among the trees, like a Rudy Gobert. Yeah. Um, so how can he fit in? I think he, I think he'll just be fine if he is himself and uh, he's, he's a quality shooter. He's a, roughly a 40% three-point shooter. Those shots will fall in time. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, you know, just watching that first game, the thing that I, I, I noticed more than anything, and it was like almost immediately upon him getting into the game, and I was hoping it would go away, was that you could tell that he was out there thinking so much yeah. and not just playing. You know, he, like he would get to spots, and I remember seeing him get to certain spots on the floor. And, Josh, I know you've seen this also, where – when he gets to certain spots, you get in the ball right there in his hands. It's going up, and then it's going down. That shot is going to go down more times than not. And there were times where Kimba or Tatum or, or Pritchard would get him the ball in, in spots that, that normally he would be aggressive and assertive and take those shots, and he would catch it, and he would think about it, and then he would put it on the floor, or then he would pass it. And then when he did take shots, uh, they weren't in rhythm. There was no flow to them. And, and so I'm not worried about him because I think once they went back and looked at the video and he saw what we all saw, he's probably kicking himself thinking like, damn, <laughs> that's just not who I am. That's not why they traded for me. Uh, if this is not going to get me that $20 million a year contract, I think I'm going to get in the offseason. That's not going to get it done. Um, I'm not worried about him too much uh, because the the, the – one positive I took about it is that he was still able to get where he needed to be. And I think he's going to figure out real quick that playing with Tatum, playing with Jalen Brown, playing with Kimball Walker, that's going to get him a lot of wide open looks. I mean, look at freaking Luke Cornette. I mean, if you didn't know better, you'd think he was like the, the second coming of Kevin Love, the way he's just rolling out there, hitting shots. And you know why? Because they're wide open. They're wide freaking open. And I think, Evan, I'm not worried about Mr. Fournier. Uh, I think he's going to be fine. I have one. I actually have something that I think is relatively intelligent. We'll see. We'll see you, you after You've got lots of intelligent stuff, Josh. Come on. Well, anyway, I think we have to remember that for the majority of his career, the top offensive player he's played with is Vucevic. And really only mm -hmm. Vucevic. Yeah. Uh, Yes, he played alongside Tobias Harris. He played alongside Victor Oladipo. But uh, they weren't who they have become at that right. time. Yeah. Uh, the Victor Oladipo of his time in Indiana was far better than the Victor Oladipo of Orlando. Same with mm -hmm. Tobias Harris in his case. So I could just imagine what it's like for him to go to a team with so much more talent. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you listed all of the people who Boston has, and it's like an embarrassment of riches compared to what he's used to. Yeah. Kemba Walker, a guy who used to torment him game after the whole, he'd win games almost single-handedly for Charlotte against Orlando for many years. Kemba Walker, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, right there, That's those are three better offensive players, arguably even better than Vucevic, than, they, than he's ever played with on an NBA team going to take him some time to figure out how to complement their games well where he fits in um it could take a it could take a period of time and the one danger of the trade is is that he's not fully comfortable by the time the postseason starts yeah yeah that would be a problem <laughs> yeah I think that would be there i think he'll get there but 
it, it's something he's not really had to do deal with on the NBA level yet.